first of all. Uh, Arvi strain is completely different mythology and it uses completely different approach. It actually evaluates RV myocardial longitudinal deformation. So it tracks the speckles within the myocardium and it provides us the number, the information about the deformation of the myocardium. This technique is less angle and load dependent than traditional RV function indexes and even than 3D ejection fraction. It less confounded by the RV geometry and passive motion of the hot of the uh, segments. It's very feasible and reproducible, and it provides important diagnostic and prognostic information additive to other RV function parameters. And let me illustrate the added value of uh, RV speckle tracking strain in the first clinical case. This is the 72 years old lady. Uh, with a history of scleroderma, she has severe pulmonary hypertension and she is already on combination oral therapy. She was admitted to the hospital with deteriorated functional status and we performed right heart catheterization and here you can see that this patient has really severe pulmonary hypertension with mean pulmonary artery pressure of 53 millimeters mercury. This is the echocardiography of this lady, and you can obviously see that the right ventricle is severely dilated. And even from this image, we, have, we can already see that it dysfunctioned. There is also prominent uh, significant tricuspid regurgitation. And if we look at the peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity and gradients, it's actually 78 millimeters mercury, so severe pulmonary hypertension. Are we interested in RV systolic function of this patient? Obviously, yes, because RV systolic function is an important prognostic marker in patients with pulmonary hypertension. So we perform the analysis of fractional area change, and the number is reduced, it's just 23%. Then we move to three-dimensional echocardiography, and here we can see that the right ventricle is severely dilated and dysfunctioned, Ejection fraction is only 30%. Let us look at the parameters assessing the longitudinal function. And surprisingly, we can see that tricuspid annulus place systolic excursion is normal, 18 millimeters, and the S wave, S prime, is also normal. But are we sure that the right ventricular longitudinal function is really normal in this patient? Well, then we move to the RV strain analysis and here we can see the results. First of all, we can see the number global longitudinal strain minus 11%, which is significantly reduced. We can also appreciate the segmental values and we can see that especially in apical parts of the RV free wall and septum, the segmental value is very low, minus 7, minus 6. We can appreciate the curves and see that the contraction of the right ventricle is desynchronous. What is the reason for that? Why do we have normal TAPSA, normal S prime, and reduced uh, longitudinal strain? Well, if we carefully look at these images, we can probably appreciate that actually the longitudinal displacement of the basal part of the right ventricle, close to tricuspid tunnelus, exactly the part where we perform our measurements of TAPSI and S prime, is uh, almost relatively normal. Preserved. Yes, exactly, is relatively preserved. However, it's absolutely clear that the mid and apical part of the RV free wall uh, contracting really poor. I think, in a, you know, we do see this same problem in so many patients. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that if you use Tapsin uh, as a mean value in hundreds of patients to perform studies, it will obviously turn out to be a good parameter. But I think it's just so important to understand that individual patients, you have to also look at this regional distribution of strain. And um, this is such a beautiful example. And it also demonstrates uh, a very similar thing that we also see with the left ventricle. Remember, when we started to assess left ventricle function, we used M mode. Now we know that M mode is not a good parameter, but we're still using it for the right ventricle. So I'm also a little bit skeptic about the value of TAPSIN. 
Well, that's very important because addition of the RV strain in this particular patient has its important value and it makes the difference because the uh, degree of impairment of the longitudinal function is prognostically important in patients with pulmonary hypertension. And it means that if we would not perform strain, we would probably assume that longitudinal function of this patient is normal despite the reduced global function. However, strain made the difference in this patient made the different diagnosis. Let us review the main advantages of the strain which allow to uh, produce the different result in this patient. First of all, uh, RV strain analysis include uh, not only basal but also mid and apical segments. It can differentiate between passive and active motion uh, of the RV segments. It does not use extracardiac reference point and TAPSI does. And as a result, it's more accurate assessment of RV longitudinal function and it is an important prognostic marker in patients with pulmonary hypertension.